Hi, this is a video on the applications of the empirical rule. Whenever you hear applications in math, as you typically know, it's usually word problems. And statistics definitely has word problems in them. Before I go into the actual first problem, I thought I'd just do a general overview of the empirical rule. As you can see here, that uh, empirical rule is based off of anything that has a bell-shaped distribution. You see a bell-shaped distribution is a symmetrical, got a hump in the middle, and goes off to the sides. Um, empirical rule says approximately 68% of the data lies within plus one, plus one or minus one standard deviation. So you can see here that the reason why it has a hump in the middle is because between negative one and positive one standard deviations away from the mean, we have about 68% of the data, the majority of the data. The empirical rule then goes on to say, in describing that bell-shaped distribution, that about 95% of the data lies between positive two and negative two. So you can see here, if you add up these four percents, don't be surprised, they come out to 95%. And then the empirical rule finishes off and says about 99.7% of the data, almost 100, but not quite, lies within three standard deviations. And if we added up all the percents from here, all the way up to here, you'd see that's 99.7% of the data. So what are these standard deviations? The standard deviations is actually a z-score. A z-score is the number of standard deviations a value is from the mean. And the way you calculate a z-score is you take the value and you subtract away the mean, and you see how much distance is between the value and the mean, and you divide it by standard deviations in the problem. And when you do that, you know how many standard deviations it is. Is it below the mean? Obviously, when the value is below the mean, you're going to have a negative z-score. When the value is above the mean, you're going to have a positive z-score. And the z-score is a very useful tool in statistics. So knowing that, let's go to our problem. Suppose we have a midterm test score and a college statistics course that has a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 5. And we're told that the midterm scores have a bell-shaped distribution. In other words, the data is going to look like this. The question is this, in part A, what is the percentage of the students that scored uh, between 60 and 75 on the midterm test? Now, to do that, we need to have some relationship of where these values are on the empirical rule graph. And to do that, we want to calculate the z-scores for each of the value. So we have to find the z-score for 60 and 75 in relationship to the mean of 70. So over here, I'm going to put my answers. I have that well labeled. Put in an equal sign. And then we'll actually subtract 60 minus the 70 divided by the standard deviation, which is in this problem is five. And you can see right here, well, how far it is. It's actually below, so I'm expecting a negative z-score for this value of 60. I can see it's actually 10 below. So I wouldn't be surprised this could be a negative two z-score. There's two values in the problem, and we're asked the percentage between the two values. I actually need to know the other z-score as well. So we'll do the same thing here. It so equals the value they gave us of 75. We'll subtract away the 70. And divide it by five. And it looks like it's going to be a one above. Its uh, value is actually above the mean. So don't be surprised whenever your value is above the mean. You're going to have the positive z score side. So now I can actually answer the question of the percentage. To do that, let me copy down the graph that we have above and just do some markers on it so you can see what we're talking about. It looks like that the uh, z scores for this problem is between a negative two. and a positive one. Let me mark them right here on the graph. That means that I need to add up the values between these, um, from the empirical rule chart, these percentages between those two z-scores. So let me graphically show you what I mean here. Make it a little easier to see. I'm gonna go from here up to there. So you can see these are, and there's only 3% between those two, these two z-scores. So those are the 3% I need to add up to answer the question. So I'll put in equals 13.5% plus 30% plus 34%. You could easily have done 13.5%, the 68% that you know it's within one. But I wanted to show work, and I think it's very important that you do that. You can see here. I have my answers. Let's 
to the problem. So I have my work supporting it. Anybody, if you're going to turn this in for homework, you have to have some work supporting. You can't just throw answers into the thing. There's no work supporter who knows where you got the answers from. Plus, when you look at this a week later, you're going to want to know how you did it. So you can see here that anyone wanting to see your work can see that you kept the time to calculate each Z score. And then you went ahead and showed inside the cell how to add up the percents corresponding to the chart. You don't have to do this chart on the side, but obviously somewhere in your Excel, you're probably going to want to have the chart itself as well. So that's part A. Let's go on to part B. Let me just get rid of the graphic. And we'll move down to part B. Part B says, what percentage of the students that scored above 60 on the midterms? So let me get this up for that. So as you know, the first thing I need to know is where is 60 on this empirical chart? What's the z-score? And the good news is we did it before. In this case, I can actually copy down what we did before. Since I have no cell references attached to it, I'm not referring to cells. I have all the actual numbers inside the formula. You can see I can easily pull down that the z-score for 60, which we used before, was a negative view. So on this pure gold chart, you can see that what it's talking about is the value that's sitting here. The key is, what percents do I add up? There's percents below and there's percents above that z-score. Well, let's read the problem again. The problem says, what is the percentage of students that scored above the 60 on the midterm test? So that tells me now what direction, what percents do I need to add up? And you can see here that I'm going to add up all the ones to the end from the 13.5%. That's just to the right of negative two, all the way up, including the 0.15%. And that'll tell me what percent of the students I would expect to score above 60 on the midterm. So let's go to our cell, put in an equal, and start adding up percent. Thirteen point five. 34 plus 34 plus 13.5%, 13.5% plus the 2.35% plus this little tail, which is the ones that are outside the, the uh, positive three standard deviations above the mean, is 0.1%. And it shows me that the answer to that question is 97.5%. And I'm going to highlight that so I can see where my answer is versus all my work to support it. Now, some of you would say, well, gee, only two of those percents were not included in it. And we know all these percents add up to 100. So, yes, you could have just as easily had taken one, which is what 100 percent, and subtract away the two. It don't matter. Let me show you that so you can see how that's done as well. It all depends on which is simpler. And you can see we get the same answer. Whether the whole thing adds up to 100%. Whether we add up the one, two, three, four, five, six that count, or we do one minus and sum the two. You can see I have to have parentheses around it to make that happen. Sum the two that don't count and subtract that away from 100. Both get us to the correct answer. It's just up to your preference, whether you just want to add up all the numbers or use a subtraction. So that's the answer to Part B. Let's go to Part C. Part C says... What percentage of the students that score below 55? On the midterm. So I don't actually have a z-score for 55. I'm not sure where it is. I know it's going to be a negative z-score, but I don't actually know what it is on this chart. So let's find the z-score of 55. So an equals value inside of parentheses, subtracted away from the mean of 70 and divided by the standard deviation of 5. And we can see that's sitting at negative 3. So it's actually sitting right here. And they went below. Below, if you look at which side do we want, do we want this side or this side? Below would be, obviously, more values lower than the mean, so it would be to the left of it. And actually, there's nothing really much to add up because it's only 1%. And you can see sometimes that I want to give it to you as a percent, so you can just go up here to where it says general, highlight the cell you want to change the format at, and pick the percent. 
because you want to answer the question. It's in percentage, you want to give it in percentage. And then I highlighted it in blue, so it's very obvious that's my answer. So here's my support, and here's my answer. And I just have a graphic here to help you. So whether you do the graphics on the right or not, that's up to you. But if it helps you, please do it. Always do as much work or more than that's needed if it helps you. But you have to show some work. And hopefully this video helps you see some applications of the empirical rule. And if you can see the applications of it and you can do these three problems, you're now ready to tackle other problems that apply the empirical role.